So friends, let's make this delicious instant dosa today. So here I've washed about one cup of whole moong and I'm going to soak it in three cups of water for three to four hours. I get about six to seven dosas with this quantity. We will also need half an inch of ginger, two light green chilies that I've cut fine, one medium sized onion chopped fine, one teaspoon of jeera seeds or cumin seeds, salt to taste, I use Himalayan pink salt, half a teaspoon of fenugreek or methi seeds, half a teaspoon of hing or asafoetida and half a cup of coriander. Now after three to four hours, I've drained all the water from the moog and I'm going to add it to my mixer jar. Then I'm going to add all of the other ingredients one by one, that is the chilies, the ginger, the onion, the coriander the cumin seeds, the jeera, that is, the methi seeds, the salt to taste and the asafoetida. And then I'm adding just a little water, about a quarter cup of, a wa of water and we're going to grind this to a very smooth paste. It should have the same consistency as a dosa or a ghavan. If you feel like you can add a little more water, to get the right consistency. Now here I've really heated up my heavy bottomed iron pan for at least 10 to 15 minutes till it's piping hot. Then I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of water and then wipe it clean with a clean kitchen towel. This way the dosa will not stick to the pan. So ensure that it's really heated up well. And then you're just going to pour about two to three, uh, you know, teaspoons or spoons full of this batter and then spread it out as much as you can, like you would with a tosa. The thinner, the better. It becomes more crispy that way. And also ensure that you fill in up all the gaps with the batter. What happens is if you, there are some gaps, then the dosa tends to break or you won't get an entire dosa. So just ensure that, you know, put a little bit of batter and spread it out. And now we're just going to drizzle a few drops of desi ghee or clarified butter or toop as you say. And we're going to let this really crisp up. So when you see the sides of the dosa browning up a little, just take your spatula or ulatna and just loosen up the dosa completely. Do it very gently so it doesn't break. And once you're confident enough that it's completely loosened up, just turn it onto the other side. And we're going to cook the other side also on a low to medium flame till it's lovely and nice and crispy. So just press it down. Let it cook on this hot tawa with the toop and except uh, with the toop, uh, you know, or, or the ghee in it. And once it's nice and crispy, then we're going to take it out in a plate. So since our pan is already nice and piping hot, you don't need to put the water and everything again. And then you just make the rest of the dosas in the same manner. This is a very simple recipe. It has very few ingredients and you don't need to soak anything overnight. Plus there's no rice. So for people who want to avoid rice because of diabetes or sugar, this is a very good idea. And plus it gets ready also so quickly. So it's a great tiffin item or a great breakfast item or a late dinner uh, recipe. So once it is nice and crisp, you can just take it and serve it with your favorite chutney. See how thin it is. And it's such a healthy recipe. So you can serve this with your favorite sambar or chutney. I'll leave a link to all my recipes of chutneys and sambar in the description box and the comment section below. So let's see today's instant rava dhokla recipe, a nice ideal breakfast or snack recipe. So to a bowl, I'm going to add one cup of rava. I'm using the fine rava or semolina. Then I'm going to add one tablespoon of lemon juice and I'm going to add one and a half cup of water. So add a little at a time and just whisk it. We want a uh, batter which is very similar to a dosa batter. 
So mix everything well. And once you've mixed everything well, we are going to set this aside to rest for 15 minutes. So this is the kind of consistency we're looking for. Also, it would be a good time to prepare your steamer. Now, after 15 minutes, give it a stir. Then I'm going to add one green chili that I've chopped fine. Mix the chili in well. Next, we're going to add some salt to taste. Mix the salt in well too. Next goes just half a teaspoon of oil. Stir everything nicely together. Now I'm going to also prepare my uh, tin in which I'm going to be steaming this rava dhokla. So just take a small tin like this and just uh, you know brush it with some oil. And now when your steamer is completely ready, that's when we're going to add one teaspoon of eno of fruit salts and mix it vigorously so it starts to double in size like this immediately. And then you're going to pour this into your prepared tin. You have to work fast once you add the fruit salts or the eno. And then we're going to put it into our steamer and steam it for 15 to 20 minutes and or until a knife inserted comes out clean. So steam it for 15 to 20 minutes, put a timer and then let the steamer completely cool down and you can see that a knife inserted comes out clean. So now once our dokla is completely at room temperature, we're just going to start cutting it into squares. Now because we oiled the tin also, it comes out really easily. And now all we have to do is put a lovely fodni or tadka. So here I have some oil which is nice and hot. To that I'm going to, about one tablespoon of oil. To that I'm going to add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds or mori, half a teaspoon of asafoetida or hinga, and half a teaspoon of cumin or jeera. And I've taken one green chili and cut it up into two. And I'm going to add that too. And now we're just going to pour this over this lovely dhokla. And then just spread it out evenly so that it goes to all of the dhokla. So you can use the back of a spoon also. Ensure that the uh, the tadka goes to all all over the dhokla. So this is an ideal breakfast item, or a, you know, when anyone's hungry to prepare. It's so simple and it gets ready also very quickly. And as you've seen, there are very few ingredients in this recipe. And then I'm just going to garnish it with some chopped up coriander or cilantro. And then all we have to do is just demold it, and it comes out really easily. And that's it guys, your dhokla is all ready to enjoy. So do give this recipe a try and do let me know in the comment section how you like this recipe. And I'll catch you in my next video sooner than you think. This is Akshata signing off. Take care guys. Bye. So friends, let's see today's instant moog dal idlis. So here I've taken one cup of yellow moog dal, washed it well and soaked it for about four hours in about three cups of water. This is the yellow moog dal. Now after four hours, I'm going to grind this to a very fine batter. 
Now we're going to heat a pan and add two teaspoons of clarified butter or ghee. Once the ghee is hot, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, half a teaspoon of urid dal, some five to six fresh curry leaves that I've chopped up fine, half a teaspoon of asafoetida or hinga, one green chili chopped fine. Fry all of this really well half an inch of ginger that I've just grated one fourth teaspoon of fine semolina or rava fry the rava till you get the nice aroma of the rava or the semolina and add all of this to the batter now uh, the moog that we had soaked first you have to drain all that water okay now i'm just adding one fourth cup of finely chopped capsicum and one fourth cup of coriander some salt to taste and one fourth teaspoon of sugar so after you drain the water and i'm also going to add one fourth teaspoon of one fourth cup of beaten up curd or yogurt I will tell you about how to grind the batter with the moog dal in some time. Mix everything really well. So once you have drained the water from the dal, just add about half a cup of water and grind it to a very fine paste. Now once your idli maker or steam maker is ready, you add half a teaspoon of eno or any fruit salts. La oil your uh, the tray that is the idli tray with a uh, ghee or, or oil i mostly prefer putting ghee and then just put this and steam it for 20 minutes on a high flame and let them cool for about two to three minutes before you demold them and if you insert a clean knife you'll see that the knife comes out really clean and there's no batter or raw batter and then just demold them very lightly with a spoon and you can have this with any kind of chutney i leave a link to my different type of chutney recipes so give this recipe a try guys it's very simple and if you have any queries about the recipe please write to me in the comment section below This is one tablespoon of ginger and green chili paste. This is half one teaspoon of lemon juice, some salt to taste, half a teaspoon of haldi powder, one tablespoon of sugar, one eno packet, then some water. This is for the fortney or the tadka. Take in two glide green chilies, a few curry leaves, a little bit of coriander for garnish. Here I have half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, half a teaspoon of hing or asafoetida and again one tablespoon of uh, sugar. I have my steamer ready. I put some water inside the steamer and started to boil the water and I've kept this kind of plate on top of it. And here I have just greased this uh, pan with a little bit of oil or brushed it with a little bit of oil. So let's start making this dhokla. So first I'm going to mix all the dry ingredients, that is the besan, the rava, the salt to taste, the sugar, the haldi or turmeric powder. And I'm going to mix everything well together. Now for the green chilli paste, I've taken uh, about one green chilli and half an inch of ginger. Now I've added about one cup of water and I've made this into a thin batter not a very runny batter not a very thick batter just one cup of water for one cup of basin now I'm adding two tablespoons of oil and again I'm going to mix everything well together I'm going to add the lemon juice now I'm going to add my green chili and ginger paste mix that in well
and now my steamer is ready and when I'm just ready to put the uh, the dokla into the steamer I'm going to add the eno and I'm going to mix it up well till the mixture doubles in size then I'm going to pour everything into the plate for the greased dish and I'm going to put it into the steamer now I've closed the steamer and I'm going to steam it for exactly 20 minutes now after 20 minutes you can see that it starts leaving the sides of the pan and also if you insert a clean knife you'll get it very clean so now we're going to uh, transfer this dokla onto a plate first I'm just loosening the edges and then I'm just going to cut them into square size pieces and now I'm going to prepare my tadka or my fodni so I've heated about two tablespoons of oil in go my mustard seeds when they begin to splutter I'm going to fry the green chilies fry them really well once that is done we're going to add in the hing or asafoetida, the curry leaves mix everything well together then we're going to add in the sugar and we're going to add about half a cup of water now you can turn your gas off and just mix everything well and now we're just going to pour this over our dhokla and then garnish it with some fresh coriander and your dhokla is all ready to enjoy. So let's start with the recipe. Now I've heated up a pan and I'm going to add one wati but you can also use a cup of uh, semolina or rava. Now what I do is I use the fine rava because it cooks fast. So I'm going to roast this dry roast it, and I've also kept two cups of the same measurement of water for boiling. We have to bring the water to a complete boil. Now keep stirring the rava and then once it's done transfer it to a bowl wipe the pan very clean there should be no rava in the pan and then just add about two tablespoons of clarified butter or ghee now our water has boiled so you can turn it off now once the ghee is nice and hot i'm going to add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds once they begin to splutter i'm going to add half a teaspoon of cumin and one green chili cut fine one teaspoon of udit dal and some fresh curry leaves now give all of this a good uh, fry then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of asafoetida or hing followed by some cashew nuts fry everything really well in this ghee and then I'm going to add one medium onion that I've chopped fine fry the onion well too and now we're going to add the roasted rava now you should roast your rava really well, stirring it continuously or in, in intervals till you get the aroma of the rava. Then you're going to add some salt to taste and I like to add a pinch of sugar that is about 1 4 teaspoon sugar of sugar. Mix everything well. And now we're going to add the, we're going to scrape all the sides and bring everything to the center because now we're going to add the hot water. So everything should come to the center. And now you're going to pour the hot water. So please be careful because the water does splutter. And then just immediately cover it. Don't stir. Cover and cook it for about 2 minutes on a low to medium flame. After 2 minutes, stir everything very well. 
there will be some water still left so we are going to again cover and cook it for another 2 to 3 minutes on a low to medium flame now after 2 to 3 minutes we are just going to give it a nice stir and then you will see that everything leaves the sides of the pan so now we just have to garnish it with some finely chopped coriander mix it in well then we are going to turn off the heat and I am going to add the juice of half a lemon again mix everything nicely now I like to squeeze a lemon in the spoon because if there are any seeds or pips then you can remove it mix everything well and our rava is our upma or pit is ready now I am just going to grease one vati or a bowl with some uh, ghee then I am going to take the rava fill it up to the brim and just press it down then I am going to take a plate in which I am going to serve this just put it on top of the rava and take off the bowl or the vati doesn't that look pretty it looks very nice for presentation and just decorate with some hey, coriander I hope you're going to give today's recipe a try share my recipes with family and friends go and visit my channel i have more than 500 recipes as of today so go try them out share them with family and friends and let me know also in the comment section below how you like the recipe also don't forget to give this recipe a big thumbs up by clicking the thumbs up icon that you see below this video. If you haven't joined Akshita's recipes yet, click the subscribe button that you see below this video and become a part of Akshita's recipes. And once you have subscribed, there's a little bell icon that will pop up. Just click it. That way, whenever I put up a new video, a recipe, vlog, or I'm just online uh, waiting to chat with you, you'll get a message for the same. So friends, thank you so much for watching today's video and I will catch you in my next video sooner than you think. This is Akshita saying bye. Take care, stay healthy, stay fit, be loving and kind to one another. So till I see you in my next video, bye.